Welcome to the Backspace Academy Lab on low latency HTML5 websites using S3, CloudFront and Route 53. In this series of labs we're going to look at creating a, an Amazon S3 bucket, uploading a HTML5 website to that Amazon S3 bucket and then look at creating uh, version control and also uh, look at creating a life cycle rule to enable automatic uh, management of uh, archiving of our, of our data in our S3 bucket. Then we're also going to look at uh, fronting our S3 bucket with CloudFront to deliver very low latency service for our end users. And we're also going to look at using Amazon Route 53 to purchase a domain name and also to use Amazon Route 53 for delivering traffic uh, to, uh, to CloudFront and S3. So before we can uh, create our Amazon S3 bucket, we need to know what the domain name is going to be. Uh, we need, need that because the Amazon S3 bucket needs to be in the same name as the domain name that we're going to be serving. So we need to first get that domain name. So we're going to jump into Amazon Route 53 console and we're going to purchase a domain name off Amazon. Um, you don't have to use Amazon for that. Uh, you might be able to shop around and get a little bit cheaper, but using Amazon makes life a lot easier and uh, a lot more straightforward than uh, having to change name servers over to Amazon and, and uh, you know from a different registrar and whatever. Um, if you don't want to purchase a, uh, a domain name, you don't need a domain name for anything, uh, just ignore this step and, we, and you can do it without a domain name, not a problem. Uh, it just means you, you, you won't complete the, uh, the lab fully. So first thing we need to do is uh, go into domain registration and click on get started now. So then uh, we can see we've got no domains here, it's a new, a new uh, account that we've got here. So we click on register domain. And now we choose a, a domain. So I'm going to uh, look at maybe an, a .org. Seems to be a pretty cheap one. And I'm going to look for DevKid. Maybe buy a domain name for my for my son, who's uh, a bit of a dev kid. Okay, that's available there. DevKid.org. I think I'll grab that. So I'll add that to cart. And scroll down to the bottom here and uh, click on continue. and just fill out all your registrant contact details. So once you've uh, done all those processes, you uh, get to thank you screen for registering your domain to Route 53. So go to domains and you'll see there it is your, uh, your domain registration. So now you have your domain name, you can actually create your uh, S3 bucket now. So now let's just jump into S3, go to the S3 console, okay and we'll click on create bucket and our bucket name will be the name of our domain name and we'll select a region, I'm going to use US standard here and we'll create that bucket. Okay so there it is, so we're going to now go into that bucket and we can upload from here. So we've got nothing to upload so let's uh, jump into um, HTML5 up which is a website that provides really really cool looking uh, websites for free. Okay so we'll just uh, select one of these so um, I think this one looks pretty good. What have we got here? Yeah, we'll, we'll download that one. So back into our uh, Amazon S3 console and we're just going to go into our bucket that we created for our domain name. Uh, my name here is devkid.org, yours will uh, obviously be different to that. And we've actually uh, extracted the, uh, the website, uh, it was in a zip file before, we've just extracted that and we're just going to upload that across. So we click on uh, upload here and we'll drag and drop all of those files across. And then uh, what we'll do is uh, set details on there. We don't want to use uh, reduced redundancy or server-side encryption, so we'll leave that as it is. 
uh, setting permissions. So we want to upload this as public. We want everyone to be able to see. That's, that's not a problem there. So uh, make everything public. That's fine. Uh, set metadata. We don't need to do anything there. And now we just click on Start Upload. Okay, so that's finished uploading. So now what we want to do is uh, create a, a static website. So we're going to go into Properties now. And we go into here Static Website Hosting. And we're going to put in our index document here, which is uh, index.html. We would all, normally also put in an error document, but I don't have one for now, so we'll just leave that empty for as it is. You just you do need to put in an index.html file in there. Uh, and we'll just click on Save for that. And now we can click on this endpoint here. Okay, so that's the endpoint for our, our website. Uh, and we would also go into Route 53 and point our, um, our domain to that as well. So just uh, click on that and just see what happens. And there you can see we've got a pretty flash looking HTML5 website up in, uh, in next to no time. You see here uh, it's got all the bells and whistles on it. It's uh, pretty good. Okay, so just jumping back into the S3 management console, we'll just uh, close this static website ho hosting section. And we'll go into the versioning section. So what we're going to do now is set up versioning, or enable versioning, and then we're going to create a uh, lifecycle rule that is going to manage uh, automated archiving of versions to um, to Amazon Glacier. So first thing we need to do is click on enable versioning. Uh, ask us, do we really want to do that? Yes, we do. So we're just going to now have a look at um, how versioning actually works. So let's have a look at index.html. So if we just select that, and we've got this under version control now, so we could actually delete this and then recover it. So how we do that, so we're going to Actions and Delete. Okay, so after a certain amount of time, that's, that's uh, deleted that. So you can see here, uh, we can refresh the screen over here, uh, and there's it's definitely gone from our screen there. So what we can do now is, up here it says uh, Versions, Versions here, and we can click on Show to show the versions. So what we can see here under index.html down the bottom here, we can see there our original version, which is, has ver version ID null, uh, and that's and we have a look at the properties on that, and so there it is. So that's uh, that's that's still there. Okay. So then we have a look at the next one above here. So this is a got another version ID, but look at the properties. It's not a file. So what this actually is is a delete marker. Okay. So if we actually delete our delete marker the object will then reappear in, in the folder. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So go into Actions and Delete. And there we've deleted that delete marker. So if we go back in and hide our versions, and there we can see it's reappeared. Uh, and just the same, we can actually look at now uploading a new version and seeing how that ha happens as well. So we'll just go to Upload. And we'll just upload another version of index.html. So just drop that in there. Um, go into Set Details, Set Permissions, make everything public and upload that. OK, so you can see nothing much has changed here. But we'll just select that and we'll click on Show for Versions. And here we can see we've got the original version there. And again, we've got another version up the top here. So we'll have a look at that. And we'll click on Properties. Okay, so unlike before where you just had a delete marker here, you now have another object. Okay, so you've got the original object there and then the second one that's been uploaded. So we can, again, we can delete that, that uh, object if we want, or uh, which we might just do now. So we just delete that and go back to our original object that we had. And then we click on Hide Versions and we're back in again. So that's how, uh, how versioning works, and it's a really helpful thing to have uh, in case something goes wrong. 
Okay, so now that we've got versioning set up, we can now go into uh, creating a life cycle rule that will manage old versions. So let's go into uh, life cycle, add rule, and we're going to apply this to the whole bucket. And then we go and configure rule. So what we want to do is on old versions of, of our data, uh, we want to, after a period of time, store that to Glacier. And then after a, an even greater period of time to actually delete it permanently from Glacier or, as well. So what we're going to look at is action on previous versions. We're going to archive old versions of our data. And then after a certain period of time, we're going to uh, delete it. So we're probably going to archive after 30 days. So we're going to move old versions from S3 to uh, to Amazon Glacier after 30 days. And then when it's been sitting in Amazon Glacier for, say, uh, six months or 180 days, we're going to permanently delete it from Glacier as well. So that's what we're doing now. And we just click on Review. And we'll give that rule a name. And we'll just call it backspace-lab. Uh, and then it's going to run on devkid.org, the whole bucket. And the action is on previous versions. And we're going to archive to Glacier after 30 days, or after 30 days of being overwritten. And then we're going to permanently delete these previous versions after 180 days. So that looks fine to us. So we create and activate rule. And there we have it. Okay, so now we do also need to create another bucket uh, because we've got here devkid.org, uh, but also we'd, we'd like to have a bucket for www.devkid.org so uh, to serve any request for that specific subdomain. So we'll go into uh, all buckets uh, and then we create another bucket for www.devkid.org or whatever your domain name is. And then we select a region, so the same region, US Standard again. Uh, and then we just click on Create for that. Okay, so once we've got that done, it'll take a bit of a while to set up. So we need to go into now, into the Properties, and go into, again, Static Website Hosting. So we don't want to enable this as a website. We want to redirect all the requests that go to www.devkid.org, and we want to redirect those to just devkid.org. So we're going to click on here, redirect all requests to another host name. And it's already filled that out for us, devkid.org there, okay? So we just click on save and that will be done for us automatically. Okay, so that's it for the first part of this multi-part lab. This has been primarily on the Amazon S3 service. Uh, as you learn more about CloudFront, uh, you will be looking at fronting your S3 bucket with a CloudFront service to provide very high speed, low latency service for your end users. You will also look at in, your, in the Route 53 section in using Route 53 to, to serve domain name requests uh, for your domain name through to this uh, CloudFront and, and S3 service. I'll see you in the next lesson.